डू यू नो वाई रैग फेल समटाइम्स एंड हाउ टू इम्प्रूव यूर कॉन्टेक्स्ट रेलिवेंसी सो इन दिस वीडियो आई एम एक्सप्लेनिंग यू ऑल ऑफ दिस हाई गाइज वेलकम टू फ्री वर्ड्स व्यू एंड इन दिस वीडियो आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट अ नॉलेज आर्गुमेंट जनरेशन दैट इज मच फास्ट एंड मच रेलिवेंट दैन द रैग एज वेल ओके सो लेट गेट स्टार्टेड so very first thing is uh what is rag okay so rag is actually a technique where large language models retrieve the relevant information from the external sources like vector dvs to to generate the answer so that uh, suppose like uh, you want to ask a question about what is the capital of france and sometimes model hallucinate but you don't want it hallucinate as well so you provide the context with your prompt as well and then the model will generate your answer and the un- answer will be correct that is called paris okay and similarly so there are some challenges with the rag because rag depends on the vector similarity that often fails in the reasoning based task or the problem solving task as well for example if i talk about that what is the difference between the france and germany so in that it lacks coherence and the reasoning because multiple piece of evidences are required here okay a short context will not always work okay so that that's why you got the issues like the missing context uh, it don't uh, give you the relevant context it don't rank the relevant context as well okay and that's where the uh, cag comes the cag is basically the knowledge argument generation okay that improves the reasoning abilities of the uh, your uh, vector db and uh, it can uh, give you the logical answers always okay for example in the healthcare uh, domain what if i ask like what are the symptoms of the diabetes so that cag will retrieve all the medical knowledge and use the reasoning to produce the precise and the reliable answer so that's here is the cag kind of architecture that will explain in the further steps okay then we have the limitations of that okay so the basic limitation is that that it does not have the reasoning abilities okay because it always struggle with the numerical calculations kind of task it always struggle with the reasoning task where we have to hop multiple times between the multiple facts okay and uh, it it uh, has a, like a, a gap in the bit creating the relationship between multiple contexts as well so these are all the like limitations of the rack okay so that's why we use the cag so in the cag we have the three main modules the first module is called cag builder okay and then we have the cag solver then we have the cag model okay that's where is called the cag builder and that's where is the cag solver and the below is called the cag module as well that contains the natural language understanding and natural language generation part as well okay so let's talk about the cag builder okay so the cag builder the main purpose of this is to prepare the offline knowledge graph and index data for the easy retrieval because uh, whenever we want to extract uh, the structured information like the entities or their relationship uh, with other kind of uh, entities as well so the cag builder will always align your structured data with the unstructured chunks of the text as well okay for example if if i just say the a legal document is divided into multiple parts like their uh, laws their dates their are uh, relationships their amendments their pre- uh, their presidents as well in a very uh, cleaned uh, structured form okay so that's where the cag builder is completely designed to build a offline index of your data so that we can process that uh, uh, data and always get a structured or a reasoning enabled responses at the end okay and then we have the uh, cag solver so the cag solver actually execute the reasoning task for you because it has the part of the planning the retrieval and the reasoning as well okay it use the logical forms to to break every task or every query into the steps okay for example if if i just ask that how often has venice experienced the plague okay then the cag decompose this kind of query into uh, multiple steps so first it uh, retrieve the historical data then it uh, perform the reasoning on that and then it generate the answer okay the cag solver always have this kind of a logical form guided hybrid reason system okay so that can help you to uh, reason your uh, queries or, or your prompt and at the end give you a full fledged right answer 
okay and then we have the CAG model so the CAG model is actually the large language model capabilities so we have the uh, natural language understanding reasoning and the generation part as well okay there are like multiple fine-tuned models like CAG LLAMA that outperform the generic models are used in this CAG models as well and the CAG models are always optimized to perform the uh, natural language task at a very high level okay so that's why these kind of uh, fine-tuned CAG models in this CAG framework okay so th that's how this whole thing will work and uh, if i just talk about the CAG component so whenever the data comes into the CAG it first extract the information and then it make the knowledge and from the knowledge it generate the wisdom as well okay the text is always divided into the chunks and then it uh, those chunks are uh, converted into the form of a graph so, so that we can know the relationship between the each entity and each word or each person that is mentioned in our information and then we have a structured knowledge graph at the end because if i just say that uh, diabetes is caused by high blood sugar so that is divided into that part like diabetes is something else that causes sugar so it reason with your uh, text that you input to it okay and uh, then we have that the key components so the basic component that it used is called the uh, mutual indexing because whenever you put the data into the CAG it always index in the best possible way so so that you can al always know the complete reasoning behind your uh, query and your answer as well so it consists of three parts the first is the structured information acquisition then 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 it has the knowledge sentiment alignment and then it has the graph storage writer the main goal of these kind of all module is to build a uh, mutual indexing that is between the graph structure and the text chunk so whenever you provide a kind of a input that uh, that goes through the chunking so that chunking should be always aligned with the graph structure that is created from that chunk as well okay so that will provide it a more descriptive structure that can be easily used as a semantic graph to gain uh, knowledge from that kind of a chunk as well. Uh, for example, if we just say that uh, uh, a chunk is about the housing benefits, okay, that is already linked to the knowledge graph and the entities like uh, government schemes or the eligibility criteria kind of words as well because these kind of things are very uh, used or very similar to these kind of words as well. Okay, so that's how it just to try to do the mutual chunking between the graph structure and your uh, chunk text as well. Okay, and uh, then we have the logical form solver that actually do the logical reasoning for your query as well. Okay, so whenever a query comes to it, it performs the, all the logical kind of uh, uh, steps to that and that's the uh, algorithm that is I just put there. So for, for example, if, if just say that uh, what documents are uh, required for the ho uh, housing application in the Hangzhou. So the first step is it identify the key entities like, uh, like the housing application and the name of the place that is called Hangzhou. And then it retrieve the relevant information like the policies, the required documents and all the rules and reg uh, regulations that are there. And then it provide a coherent answer that is very much aligned to your query as well. So it will give you all the policies, all the documents, all the rules, all the regulations and where to go, when to go, everything it will provide to you. So that's how the logical form over in CAG will work. Okay. And then we have the knowledge alignment because sometimes the knowledge that we pass is not very correct. Sometimes it has some kind of missing word or any kind of like that, like that. So the knowledge alignment part always aligns your text to the domain specific structure by using the semantic relations. For example, if uh, I just uh, know, uh, I just thought that there is a spacing issue between my sentences. So that is taken care by the knowledge alignment. And then we have the model enhancement parts like NLU, NLI or NLG. So these are all the parts that can help generate the context relevant and the query coherent answers as well at the end because the NLU use the understand the domain specific queries and the NLI is to infer the semantic relations as well and the NLG to generate the 
context aware responses as well at the end okay and uh, then we have the mathematical foundations because at the end how the logical reasoning work as a math so what do we actually find from this kind of a statement so for example if a is a diabetes increases sugar levels and b is a high sugar level are dangerous so it deduce from that that diabetes is dangerous okay so that's how the logical reasoning actually works and then we have the retrieval example so let, let's just say i just ask what documents are required for the disability certificate in the hangzhou so for that it uh, try to retrieve what it try to retrieve the applications and what it required it required the supported chunks and the location that it has is the hangzhou so in in that way it just try to get all the informations from from it in the very structured form okay and uh, then we'll talk about the practical applications of the cag so this figure completely illustrate that how cag is used in the e government to perform the q and a kind of a task because it is very domain specific kind of a project because you can because if you apply this kind of a cag in a very domain specific environment it learns from that uh, data build relationship between the data and give you the context aware and the very logical reasoning answers at that for example if i just ask what documents are required for the housing benefits so for that it will uh, give you all the like policy related documents all the criterias eligibility criterias everything as well in the end and it can be used in the healthcare as well where you can like try to ask about the treatments or uh, about the person medical conditions and what are the symptoms are there everything you can ask okay so now let's check their results with the real world examples so the company uh, actually build a very great uh, product here because it can handle the multi hop qa task so the multi hop task means where you have to uh, ask questions one by one on the same topic so that's where it perform really 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 well because it's demonstrate the faster execution uh, outperform multiple kind of uh, the pre trained or the already existing frameworks as well so now so now let's go to and build a real world application and see that how the uh, cag works in the uh, real life or the real example so first thing we have is the this kind of a dependency so first we need to install the cag in the uh, using the docker so first you need to install the docker okay and when you install the uh, docker you just need to pass this command you can easily get this command from the uh, this kind of a link okay and you can pass this command and the it start getting downloaded and after it start getting run when it's getting run just need to pass a simple command like just co copy paste this and paste here okay the doctor logs and in the logs it will give you the link at where server it is it is running at the time so you can just co copy this link and paste in your url here okay and then this uh, cag uh, uh, site will open and then you have to create a knowledge base in the knowledge base you have to pass your uh, chinese name for the knowledge base the english name for the knowledge base as well and then you have to pass your uh, st storage informations okay that uh, where you have to store your uh, kind of this kind of data as well okay so i just pass the neo 4j because i want to build a graph kind of uh, db as well and then i pass the my model information here and i use the gpt 40 i pass with all my api keys as well and then i have to pass the vector information the vector db okay so for that i pass the vector db information with its vector db uh, api key okay and after passing everything i just pass a prompt word that uh, that uh, i can use to access it as well okay after passing everything i just click on the okay if you need any more help you can go to this uh, user guide and it will help you with uh, with everything as well okay and then then we have our uh, cag demo kind of for non knowledge base ready now let's upload the document in it just uh, click on it and we click on okay here and uh, it's some sometime error is there let's solve it okay okay so let's run our neo 4j first let's start the neo 4j we start the neo 4j already and then let's 
okay and now let new for just started now let's uh, check cover uh, the cag demo and we just need to upload a file here so that file is our data that need to be chunk and get the kind of structured form or the graph form as well i just make the uh, name here and then i just up upload the file okay the file is uploaded successfully here and uh, okay and then we need to uh, set the say, segment length or the chunk length so we just try to set it there and then we have to uh, write about our extraction model that we already passed okay and then we have to uh, write about the uh, everything and after we click on the finish our CAG is already built here let's start and check it okay so let's see this is the logs of that it is starting running right now okay and that is how your uh, knowledge graph would look like let's check in the knowledge uh, server and graph db uh, let's load first and uh, write our uh, uh, neo4j query here and uh, the query is right down and that's how your uh, neo4j graph db look like that's how your information is chunked and uh, saved as well okay and it is it is really look uh, very very good because uh, it is uh, completely chunked and make the entities and the relationship between them as well okay and then and then we have to see that how our cag actually uh, looks like there we just go there and uh, see that uh, so okay so that's here we have the uh, question here that uh, what is all the name of the model they fine tuned okay so that is a question they have and it also generate the answer from the cag as well okay and that answer is very context relevant provides us the information that we need only to the point okay so that's how this cag completely works i hope you completely understand that how this cag is a really game changer solution uh, above the brag as well okay so let me know if you use this kind of a tool this tool is really amazing i i will put the link of the this tool in in my video uh, description as well and if you want to learn about the generative ai prompt engineering and machine learning you can watch my videos on youtube and also read my blogs on medium we'll meet in our next video thank guys thank you so much